So the next new generation of Pokemon games, Pokemon Sun and Moon, have been announced a couple months ago. And within that time, we received a ton of new information about these games. We now know the region, the main cast of characters, the starters, the legendary Pokemon and their typing, and probably a bunch of other stuff I'm forgetting as well. But despite all this, we still don't know much about what other kinds of new Pokemon will be in Sun and Moon. And like any good Pokemon fan, my favorite part about waiting for any new Pokemon game is speculating about what kinds of new Pokemon will be in it. And even though there's like, what, 700 plus Pokemans now? There's still a lot of other ideas, objects, and more importantly, animals that aren't yet official Pokemon. So that's why I welcome you to the Shooka Shell Bombs, Top 5 Animals That Should Be Pokemon. Number 5, a Miniature Horse. Meanwhile, at Game Freak, let's see, we got rodents, we got bats, we got mushrooms, we got monkeys, we got weird... Triclops, Pokemon. What else are we missing? Horses! We need more horses. Not unicorns, not zebras, no. I mean, straight up, horses. And this Pokemon is my solution to this problem. He might look derpy now, but I have big plans for this dopey Pokemon. I plan on evolving him three times! Basically, think Eevee, but horse. That's this Pokemon. Now, I was going to show you all its evolutions right now, but I don't think anyone wants to see four to five Pokemon on this list be horses. Now, do we? I'll save them for another day. As for its typing, stats, and abilities go, I'd make it a normal type with the abilities Oblivious or Fur Code, and I'd give it 80 HP, 62 attack, 56 defense, 54 special attack, 48 special defense, and 30 speed. He'd be a beast in Little Cup, basically. Also, he's based after Eeyore, and Winnie the Pooh is my jam. Number 4, Hummingbirds. Specifically, Tuft, Coquette, and Calliope Hummingbirds. Believe it or not, this one's actually my favorite on this list. But I placed it so low because it's a pretty common idea, and I believe they're already gonna do it. It would feel like a missed opportunity if they didn't put a hummingbird Pokemon in Sun and Moon. I don't know if you could find hummingbirds in Hawaii, but it sure does feel like a Hawaiian type of Pokemon. I mean, you can't find a koala in Hawaii, so hell, they could probably fit in a hummingbird Pokemon or two. Hummingbirds are just one of those animals that look like they'd be a Pokemon already, too. I already know the typing I'd give it as well. I'd make it a fairy and flying type. I'd also make it a blisteringly fast, but fragile, supportive Pokemon. Kind of like Ninjask, but better in every way. But unlike Ninjask, I'd also give it the Sap Zipper ability. Not only does it make sense, but it also would make it immune to three types! That sounds awesome! Number 3. Yellow Belly Sea Snake. When I heard that Sun and Moon were based on Hawaii, the first thing I looked up was a list of animals in Hawaii. And I found the usual, dolphins, sea turtles, mongooses. But the animal that stuck out to me the most was the yellow belly sea snake, an aquatic snake that's highly venomous and with an oar-like tail. And when I heard that, I knew exactly what kind of Pokemon this animal would be. A bulky water poison type Pokemon with the ability Poison Touch and with access to multi-hit moves like Tail Slap. Poison for days, son! Now, I know there's already a bunch of other water and poison type Pokemon and poison snake type Pokemon out there, and even though we really don't need another one, I still feel like this animal should be a Pokemon. Number 2 Ospreys. You might be asking yourself, what's an Osprey? I've got two words to say Seahawk! And after saying that, you know exactly what kind of Pokemon this animal would be. A water and flying type. Ospreys are really cool too. They look so majestic and... Intimidating. And with that said, the abilities I would give it would be Swift Swim and Intimidate. Kinda like Gyarados. And similar to Gyarados, I designed it so we could run on an offensive style or defensive play style. With the ability Swift Swim, and with access to strong moves like Hydro Pump and Hurricane, 
this Pokemon would have the potential to be a beast in the rain. But at the same time, it balances out with Thunder also having a perfect accuracy in the rain. And being a water and flying type, that'd be a guaranteed KO for this Pokemon. However, despite being four times weak to electric type moves, water and flying type Pokemon can be disturbingly bulky. The two types, water and flying, complement each other quite nicely, with each type cancelling out at least one weakness the other type has, while adding on resistances and even immunities simultaneously. And with the ability Intimidate, this Pokemon can take neutral physical hits incredibly well. I wouldn't give it any ice type moves though, I think that'd be a little too broken. So I just give it Dragon Claw. Number 1, Cheetahs. And not just any Cheetahs, King Cheetahs. It amazes me that there are no Cheetah Pokemon. This animal is screaming, make me a Pokemon. I mean, it's yellow, it's fast, it has stripes. That's an electric type, but I'd also make it part flying as well. My reasoning for this is because when Cheetahs run, its body is completely off the ground between each stride. And when I was designing this Pokemon, that little fact reminded me of the Greek god Hermes, who had winged shoes known as Talaria, that gave the user the ability to fly and to be as swift as any bird. Not only would that give me an excuse to make this Pokemon have one of the best typings in the entire game, but it would also give me an excuse to give this monster the Gale Wind's ability as well. It would be like if Emolga and Talonflame had a bastard child, and then they gave that child to Satan for him to raise. And since this Pokemon became so broken so quickly, I decided I might as well go all the way and give this demon serene grace as well. And with access to stab paralysis moves like Thunderbolt and flinching moves like Air Slash, this Pokemon would be the ultimate power flincher. The trade off for being such a completely broken Pokemon though, is that it's very frail. Like an actual cheetah, this Pokemon is built for speed and quick kills, and not for stamina or heavy fights. Because of this, another great ability for this Pokemon would be Reckless. Cheetahs can run and kill things very quickly, but they tire easily and can only hunt for short periods at a time. A lot like how Reckless works. I'm undecided if I should give it Roost as well, but I think that would be crossing the line. And there you have it! These are the top 5 animals I believe should be Pokemon. What animals do you believe should be Pokemon? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want me to make another video like this, make sure you let me know by leaving a like down below. Also, if you want to watch me do be stupid and play video games, use the link to my Let's Plays. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all later! Peace!